Justifiant is a shooter that definitely caught me by surprise. The whole reason why this game was on my radar originally was because of Ubisoft trying to rebrand the Tom Clancy franchise and adding punk rock elements to it. It's fast paced firefights meets punk rock mosh pit. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Yeah, that idea was such a dumpster fire that Ubisoft had to do damage control for it by not only removing the Tom Clancy endorsement altogether, but also 86ing all the punk rock bullshittery in order to actually make sure that people would want to invest their time into. And I have to say, for a free-to-play shooter, yeah, it's got my time and energy to boot. Here's why Ubisoft's X Defiant is actually good. <laughs> Now that I hopefully still have your attention, hey Snot, what's X Defiant? Excellent question, my good audience. X Defiant is a free-to-play team-based shooter available on all platforms such as PC, Xbox Series, and PlayStation. Not to mention the game is indeed crossplay. To summarize it even better, it's a multiplayer game where all the factions from Ubisoft's top-selling shooters, like the Tom Clancy Endorsed series and other titles, go head-to-head -head on maps in those games' respective universes. These factions include the Cleaters from The Division, the Phantoms from the online game Ghost Recon Phantoms, the Libertad forces from Far Cry 6, Echelon from the Splinter Cell franchise, my favorite. DeadSec from Watch Dogs, and the GSG-9 from Rainbow Six Siege. All of these factions in turn have three different characters the players can choose from, and the factions themselves have different perks, gadgets, armor and speed stats, and ultimate abilities too, which I will address later. X Defiant has some interesting multiplayer modes also. Escort is an attack and defend-like mode where the attackers have to, well, escort a robot camel looking thing to the end of the defender's area before the timer runs out. Ah, Jim. Robot camels. There is also zone control, which is a hard point game mode for you Call of Duty guys. Domination, Occupy, Hotshot, which is pretty much like a bounty mode. Capture the flag, and of course Team Deathmatch. Let me be clear. This game is in no way, shape, or form a Call of Duty killer. X Defiant is its own thing, and it rightfully should be its own thing. Believe it or not, I actually like this game a hell of a lot more than Modern Warfare 3 by a long shot. Mostly because it's a game I didn't really see coming, but it's also something new. It's a fast-paced shooter like Call of Duty, but X Defiant has its own identity, which makes it unique in today's market in competitive shooters. Not to mention it's a free-to-play, cross-play shooter. And gameplay and gunplay-wise, it's pretty solid. The weapon customization is nothing to shake a stick at so far, but I'm I'm hoping that X Defiant will have a larger than life player base so Ubisoft can throw us some more weapons to play around. In terms of balancing, I have seen some things that Ubisoft should address, but I'll go more in depth on that later. From now, I want to go over some of my favorite factions from the game, so you can decide for yourselves if X Defiant is worth y'all giving it a well-deserved chance. Up first, we have the Phantoms. The Phantoms are your run-of-the-mill mid-tier assault playstyle class with okay armor and decent speed. You're better off running this faction with assault rifles, and if you really want to be that one guy in the lobby, run it with shotguns. A bit of warning though, players are legit bullet sponges in this game, so just empty half the magazine to anybody you see. But headshots deal more damage. Duh. The one thing X Defiant has made clear is that whatever kind of loadout you create, from assault rifles, shotguns, SMGs, LMGs, etc., that all factions are pretty versatile in handling any kind of weapon platform. But based on how I play, I make specific loadouts for specific factions and loadouts that are pretty universal with any faction in the game. To me, anyways, it seems like certain factions handle specific weapon platforms better. But the gadgets the Phantoms use are pretty nifty for any kind of game mode. The most predominantly used one for me and 
Probably the majority of the lobby is the Magwall, a shoulder-fired energy shield that will protect you and your team from incoming fire and allows you and your buddies to shoot through the shield, making it a very effective gadget to your arsenal. However, if the enemy team focuses their fire on the Magwall, it can only take a certain amount of damage before it collapses and leaves you and your allies exposed. It is good for both offense and defensive tactics, but use it wisely for it has a long cooldown to use it again. The Blitz Shield is a honking, heavy shield that can be used for both offense and defense. It is not as forgiving as the Magwall, because you have to use the shield with both hands, leaving you unable to use your weapons. However, the shield itself is a weapon, and you can bash enemies with it if they are in range. This gadget is very helpful in escort while attacking. Just stick close to the robot camel while it protects your booty, and any direct fire the shield will take. However, you move very slow with the shield deployed, and your blind spots are an ideal target for the enemy team to put you down. The upside is the cooldown time is faster than the magwall. Phantom's passive ability is that they have slightly more health than other factions, so they are pretty tanky. Now the ultimate ability is very interesting. Once the player accumulates 100 points, i.e. kills and objective-based points, the faction symbol will begin to illuminate, indicating that the ultimate ability is ready to be used. The Phantom's ultimate is a near impenetrable bubble shield that is large enough to house the entire team, and the player also has a force gun that is best used in point-blank situations. This ultimate ability is the best of both worlds for offense and defense in any game mode and can turn the tables in a neck-and-neck -neck game. Next on my list is the cleaners. These absolute broken units are useful and can be the bane to all Echelon users' existence. They are tanky, and they have a perk so broken I think Ubisoft should address it. They have the passive ability of firing incendiary rounds from any weapon in your loadout. You heard that right. You can turn anything into a mini flamethrower. Anytime your bolt strikes an enemy, it lights them up like Christmas trees. Now, I'm one of those people that demands balance in games. But at the same time, I'm one of those sadistic asshats that likes to run nothing but escort mode, choose the cleaner faction with an LMG and wait for those sorry sons of bitches to come pouring out of their spawn, and me reenacting the opening scene as saving Private Ryan. Moving the back into the delivery zone. Not the mission. I know. <laughs> fucked up, right? Aside from booboo ass spawns and perks, these SOPs also have gadgets that absolutely turn the ties of any game in an instant while in the right hands. They have a flame drone that hones in on its prey like a hellfire freaking missile and that will detonate after a few seconds of airtime. Another gadget at their disposal is a firebomb that they slam on the ground like on WWE weeknights that not only sets the surrounding area on fire, oh no, but will incinerate and most definitely piss off anyone within its reach. But that's not all. Just when you thought it couldn't get worse. What did Ubisoft do? They gave this mother lover a no shit flamethrower as his ultimate ability. Ah, <sighs> You gotta love absolute chaos in a shooter like this one. Of course, my favorite class is no surprise for all of us watching the Echelon Faction. Ubisoft again being giant teases with anything Splinter Cell but I'll take it because it's a free-to-play shooter. This faction in particular has good speed and agility, but really lack when it comes to health and armor. Echelon does have a passive perk of being completely invisible on the enemy map, regardless of the player's actions. Like, let's say, running around with a weapon without a silencer. The gadgets they possess are a force to be reckoned with, too. The Intel suit is very useful for any game mode, no matter what. It sends out sonar-like waves that reveal enemy players' position and distance in real time, and displays that info to your allies also. Keep in mind, revealing the enemy location with this gadget works only by proximity, meaning the closer they are to the pings, the more effective the gadget is at giving positive ID. This kind of gadget can help the player outflank and maneuver the enemy team, and can even help prepare your team for setting up defensive positions and ambushes. The downside is the cooldown on this gadget does take a very long time, so use it wisely. The other gadget is the Digital Ghillie Suit, an invisibility cloak that can be near impossible for you to be seen by enemy. This gadget is great for offensive and aggressive style play. Because of the speed and agility that Echelon Faction has all together, combining a great loadout with the ghillie suit will make you the ultimate giga chat in the lobby. However, if the opposing team has a player running around with the intel suit, it will reveal your position, even if the ghillie suit is activated. The suit will also shut off once a player begins to fire their weapons. The cooldown time is okay, but it seems like it takes a long time, so use it sparingly. Because of how agile this faction is, from my point of view, they seem to be really effective with SMGs and sniper rifles. And yes, nothing sucks more than getting domed by an invisible biatch across the map, but 
make sure you always keep a lookout for any kind of scope flares. Now, the ultimate ability. <laughs> Let's say that Sam Fisher himself took time out of his very busy schedule to train these three goobers, and all of them now have the power of the one tap, god and anime on their side. What? Whoa, whoa. Lisa, Lisa. Double kill. Four. He's alive. Echelon's ultimate ability, once ready for activation, has the player engage the iconic sonar goggles. As the name implies, the goggles send out sonar waves that reveal all of the enemy's player's location on the entire map. That's correct, ladies and gentlemen. No matter the distance, no matter the ghillie suits, the goggles see all. And to make you an even more certifiable badass on screen, you whip out Sam Fisher's trusty 5-7 pistol and can one or two tap players like it's open season for John Wick himself. Thus, this ultimate ability could change the course of any game in the blink of an eye. Some might say this faction is overpowered, but I think, no, it's not. They actually nerfed this faction a little bit ago, and keep in mind, they have very terrible health. I have had multiple instances of me or an enemy using the ultimate and then absolutely get shit on. So this is another example of use it wisely. And when it's used, gotta say, it feels oddly satisfying. So if your play style is hit and run tactics, then Echelon Faction is a perfect fit for you. So all jokes aside, is X Defiant perfect? In all seriousness, no. But is it a good game? Hell yes it is. It's 2024 and vast majority of multiplayer games that are released these days have bugs and other technical issues that need to be fixed. X Defiant is no exception to this either. There were bugs that were resolved but I have seen things that need addressing like balancing issues and hit registry that need to be worked on immediately. But overall, X Defiant is a fun game to play. This is a game that not only is free to play but will have my time and energy for a long while. I would love to play this game with friends because sometimes I'll be put on the team that can't tell the difference from their left and right foot. Other times, I get loaded into a game where I'm put on a team that is absolutely demolishing the opposite or vice versa. So Ubisoft should do some work on that issue also. Microtransactions. Yes, they are in this game too. The only wall that has prevented me from unlocking the GSG9 faction. This faction was released only about a month or so ago, so if you want them, you currently have to pay for it. Unlocking factions by paying for them grinds my gears. However, when I had the dead sec faction locked, I had one of two options. One, pay to unlock, or two, grind to unlock. I needed 700,000 in-game points from both daily challenges or faction challenges in order to unlock the dead sec faction for free. So I think it will only be a matter of time until GSG9 becomes free and then I will have to resume the play to unlock grind set. Now, when a AAA studio like Ubisoft gives players that level of freedom to unlock in a faction by either paying for it or playing for it, I have respect for them. And once again, this is a free to play shooter. So Ubisoft biting the literal bullet on that decision is almost unlike them. But yet at the same time, I really want the GSG9 faction and I really do love this game. So if they want my support, then I'll give them my support by paying for it. Yeah, I know, that's really unlike me at this point. They also took criticism from the earlier version of the game to heart and listened to the community. Yeah, the punk rock bullshittery was thrown out the window because of the backlash from it. That decision brought better quality of life changes to the game and makes it even more enjoyable. The game runs fantastic on my PC and I've had only one instance of a laggy lobby in all of my 23 hours of play so far. So Ubisoft, you've earned a congratulations from me in making a fun, unique, and chaotic free-to-play shooter. I salute you. Do you guys want to play X Defiant? Let me know in the comments. Thank you all so much for watching and please leave a like and please subscribe to help me out with this channel. And as always, stay frosty.